Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our panelists for Off the Beaten Path. Is alternative funding the route for you? Please welcome Antonio Pisano, Manager, Pacoima Development Federal Credit Union, Marco Lucioni, VP of Lending, Opportunity Fund, Catherine Petralia, Co-Founder and COO, Cabbage, Levi King, President and Co-Founder, Lendio, Patrick Freeman, Director of Universal Payments and Partnerships, American Express Merchant Financing, Freya Estreller, Co-Founder and Co-Owner, Cool House, Natasha Case, Co-Founder and CEO, Cool House, and our moderator, Tammy Halibi, Senior Vice President, Membership and New Initiatives, AEO Works. Hi there, can we get a round of applause for Gear, Gear Geeks and Cool House? Two examples of the millions of businesses who have secured financing from alternative lenders around the country. We heard this morning from Craig Everett that about 44% of borrowers aren't able to secure capital from commercial banks. But don't despair because there are fair priced, convenient alternatives um, from both community lenders and an emerging class of technology players. Some of them are right here in LA and uh, the web convenience allows access from anywhere. Um, unlike the bankers you heard from this morning, our panel this, af this afternoon uh, are unregulated players and it gives them a, a great deal of flexibility in terms of how they underwrite. I want to introduce our, um, our panelists. We have two community lenders who are VEDC and Opportunity Fund. Both VEDC and Opportunity Fund are community development financial institutions designated by the Treasury Department. And these can be an excellent option um, for a business owner when a bank says no. Uh, Antonio is the manager of VEDC and Marco Luccioni is the vice president of lending at Opportunity Fund. Um, we'll also hear from uh, both Cabbage and Amex. They represent a new class of products and lenders that harness the power of technology and data analytics. Not only does the technology um, provide um, new loan products, but there are new ways of accessing products. Um, with that, I want to jump right in and uh, ask Antonio um, to describe um, your product offerings and target customer. Thank you, Tammy. Um, my name is Antonio Pisano, one of the managers for Valley Economic Development Center, VEDC. VEDC is probably one of the larger uh, nonprofit, community-based, small business lenders in the U.S. Uh, a couple years ago, we took our services uh, statewide, and we really specialize in helping out small businesses where a traditional lender like a bank or a credit union may have said no. Uh, and we really pride ourselves in being able to be that alternative source. We actually see many of our banks as partners, not so much competition, because we try and be the, the organization that can help you out when you haven't been able to reach um, or access capital by traditional means. Um, we've seen a real increase the, la the last couple of years for obvious reasons with small businesses that are existing that may have had some challenges, again, for, for obvious reasons, uh, come to us and request capital. But our typical client uh, lately has been that small business owner who's either less than two years in business or just over two years in business and who may be in need of either just simply surviving or trying to take an opp this opportunity and grow. Marco, can you tell us about your products and clients? Sure. Um, I'm Marco Luciani with Opportunity Fund, and Opportunity Fund is a nonprofit lender, CDFI, who has been around for 20 years. We cover the state of California. We do uh, loans up to $100,000 uh, with businesses that have been around for one year or more. The two products that we use are the traditional installment loan, where you can finance working capital or you can finance equipment from all the way from 12 months up to five years. And we have recently launched a product for which we've been recognized in, in the national media, which is a non-traditional lending product, which we call the EC Pay product, which is basically targeting businesses that sell through credit cards, debit cards, and where the loan works where repayment is as a factor of your debit and credit card sales. So therefore, you can actually uh, in essence, not worry about the loan, rather worry about your business and your clients, and the loan gets paid automatically as a result of your sales. Your sales go up, you pay a little more, your sales go down, you pay a little less, it's a fixed percentage, 
And so that's a product that even though it's already in the market as a merchant advance, we don't do it like that. We do it as a true loan, uh, allowing us to use that type of lending for working capital and equipment financing as well. So both um, Marco and Antonio lend, uh, are local lenders who lend to businesses here in uh, the LA area. Catherine, can you tell us a bit about um, Cabbage, uh, who you lend to and what your products look like? Sure, so we provide working capital to small businesses, primarily today businesses that sell on places like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Yahoo. And um, we have an application process that's automated. So you land on our site and you can go from the beginning of the application to funds in your account in less than seven minutes. We are targeting online merchants today because we use automated data that we collect from those marketplaces, as well as PayPal and checking account and other information we can use to validate transaction information. But we're gonna be moving offline through partnerships with companies like Intuit and UPS as we continue to grow. I'm gonna jump to you, Patrick. Uh, can you tell us about your clients and products? Absolutely, so the, the American Express um, Small Business Merchant Financing Program is really designed to bring cost-effective uh, working capital solutions to small and medium-sized businesses throughout the U.S. And the intent here is to do that in a way that is fast, uh, convenient, and very straightforward uh, for the merchants. What we offer really is, is two product constructs, one that we call uh, a monthly product, where we, in essence, look at the, the Amex settlement. So when an Amex merchant walks into that storefront and they're charging in a give, any given month, what is the value of that charge? And the monthly product uh, infuses that value, say it's $100,000, to that merchant in the beginning of the month, and then withholds a settlement through, a, through the course of the month to pay that loan back, and the very next month uh, reinfuses that capital again. That's designed really for businesses who have really ebbs and flows in their cash flow pattern, who need help making payroll, who need help paying their rent. The second product is really an annual-based product where it's for those merchants who uh, who are going out and making large ticket purchases. They're going out and making a technology upgrade. They're going out and re, you know, refacing their storefront where they need a large cash infusion. And again, we withhold payment on that over a course of 12 months to pay back that loan. Um, the, the benefit of, is, of these products are it's, it's fast financing. It's financing up to $750,000 done in a very quick and streamless process. So once they apply, funding can be in their account within three business days. And quite frankly, it is very, very competitively priced. So on that monthly product, what we're charging the merchant for that product is really a half a percent per month. So if you're borrowing uh, $100,000, you're paying $500 per month for that. If you're borrowing on an annual basis, 500 bucks times 12, you're paying $6,000 in fees in total on $100,000. So it's very, very cost effective uh, line of financing, again, intended for our merchants. To qualify for these products, that's in essence, it's a loyalty play. You need to be an American Express card accepting merchant. And to the degree you fit in that camp, and you're also, you have a, a transaction volume that these merchants are spending. Uh, they have customers coming in swiping $50,000 uh, or more over a course of a year. It makes them eligible for our line of financing. So, Levi, you, uh, you don't actually um, lend to small business owners. Can you describe uh, what Lendio does? Sure, Lendio is an online platform where business owners come and create a profile so that we can match them to a bank or a credit union or an alternative lender like many of the lenders on this panel so that they can get financing. So as a business owner, you have hundreds or even thousands of options uh, that you can go to. And a lot of business owners, they don't know where to start and they don't know where all their, uh, what all their options are because there's so many out there. And so if you come to our website, you fill out a profile, you tell us about yourself and your business, and then we're gonna match you instantly with, uh, with a commercial lender and the order of where you have the highest probability of actually getting approved so that you don't waste time going from lender to lender to find that they don't have an option or they pull your credit and you get declined and have an unnecessary inquiry on your credit. So it saves you time and saves you money and it does the same thing for the lender as well. And it's a free service to business owners so you can hit it at midnight on Sunday night and have matches uh, where you, there's a high probability of getting a loan in just a few seconds and it doesn't cost you anything. And after a business owner matches, um, they, you facilitate the relationship with the, um, with the lender or um, it goes offline? Um, how, do, how does that actually work? It, it depends on the lender. So with a lender like Cabbage, it's uh, a lot more technologically savvy and, and can do things uh, quickly and electronically. We are integrated with a few lenders to get instant results, to get instant approvals, but a lot of lenders need, have more of an offline process and they do need to gather some documentation and do things a little bit more manually. So it's a combination thereof. So they can get instant results or they can meet and go have lunch and, and do it the face-to-face uh, -face method. 
Um, some of you fund startups, but not all of you do. Um, Marco, can you talk about uh, what you look for in an emerging business? Um, to qualify your question, though, we actually uh, require that business have been operating for a year or more, although one time during the year, uh, we do have a process that was kind of like a one month uh, targeted process where we do look at startups. Um, of course, the, um, we've already done that once this year. It's been very successful. And even though um, one would look at a startup and think that they're all the same, there's different stages in startups. Um, in fact, uh, there are startups that already have cash flow and they're already generating cash flow, which uh, as a lender and underwriter, it's a lot easier to determine how much money and how much you can help. It's a little tougher to underwrite a loan from a loan perspective when there is actually no cash flow generated yet and there's a business plan or there's an idea and in that sense um, the the funds that are needed um, behave much more like equity like um, in fact i've had a couple of people come to our booth this morning um, but I've uh, pointed towards the uh, crowd lending type of um, idea because I think that's a wonderful way to fund a startup unless you already have some cash flow to prove from which you can project and you can underwrite. So I want to bring Cool House into the conversation. You all were, were a startup. Can you talk about um, your experience uh, getting capital? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so we actually, we uh, met uh, Marco at Opportunity Fund, I think a one year into operations. We already had one truck, so we had financials, we were cash flowing, and we wanted to get a second truck. Um, we couldn't uh, go to traditional lenders. Um, none of the big, big banks would lend to us um, because we only had one year of operating history. Uh, so. They financed uh, yeah, the our second truck. Our second truck, which allowed us to really scale in the LA area. And uh, with the remaining you know, capital from the loan, we also built a truck that we took to New York and launched business out there. So it allowed us to scale in the LA area and also nationally, which was you know, a big, a huge jump for us to just build um, the brand and the following to take us where we are today, which is um, you know, now we uh, have multiple trucks in LA. We have operations in Texas, big operation in New York, and also are at, at grocery stores as well. Does Lendio have uh, a range of options for startups, Levi? We do. It's a little more limited for a startup, but a, a startup with a good business credit can sometimes go, or with good personal credit and with some business credit, can typically go to a traditional bank and get a business credit card or some other type of small financing. Um, there are some microfinance products available. It is a, a, a lot more limited, and, and uh, like was mentioned, it's important to note that there's a lot of different phases of startup. So if you're just in the idea formulation phase, you'll have a very difficult time getting a loan anywhere from anyone. But if you do have some level of, of traction or, or proving that the model is viable and there's demand for it and that you can sell it, then there, there are more options. But um, using your credit is a good way to do it. Uh, crowdfunding is a good way to do it. And then as soon as you just get a little bit of traction, there are some other options as well. So let's turn to what the process looks like and what a business owner needs to be prepared. Catherine, you said it takes seven minutes to get a loan on Cabbage. Can you talk about the process? Sure, absolutely. And, and it really depends on how fast you can type. Um, <laughs> it, the decision itself is instant. What we do is we aggregate data from third parties. Let's say you sell on eBay and you process payments with PayPal and you interact with your customers on Facebook. You can add those three data sources through an off and off process that our customers use to give authorization to eBay or PayPal to share the data with us. That off and off process takes just a moment. So all they do is add the places where they sell, the ways they get paid, the places they interact with their customers, and then fill out a short application form. And Chris, you can talk about it yourself. How, um, So, sorry, we have, can't help it. <laughs> Chris from Geargy. 
<laughs> so then if you get paid with PayPal, we can move the money into your PayPal account instantly. And that's that was been really cool for us because our customers really appreciate that. We can also move funds into a checking account, but that takes a few days simply because you've got to wait for it to clear. So our objective is to make it really fast um, so our customers don't have to wait because the nice thing about using these automated data sources is there's no reason to wait. There's not a person involved looking at the information and making, you know, getting a ref recommendation or a reference check. It's just very quick. Patrick, what's the process look like uh, for an Amex borrower? Yeah, you know, I would say it, it's pretty swift as well. So when you, when you think about the, the customers who flock to our product, right, they're the restaurant owners, they're the hotel operators, they're the bar owners, they're the hair and, and, and nail salon operators. These folks are very, very busy running their business. And so, you know, if you have a capital you know, acquisition process that takes too much of their time, it's time spent away from their business. So when you come to American Express, again, this is a, a play towards our, our existing merchants, right? It's a loyalty play. We know a lot about you already. And so when you phone in, uh, the customer service reps, quite frankly, they know if you're pre-approved or if you're not. They can tell you on the phone what you're pre-approved, what you, you know, the amount you're pre-approved for. And then from there, it's about, you know, documentation gathering to validate that pre-approval. So you'll fill out a simple application. Um, you may, you'll be asked for bank statements, either three or six months of bank statements, depending on which product you're going after, the, the monthly product I talked about earlier, or the annual product. Um, there's, you know, a series of forms that we put together, but from there, the process is, is very lean. Again, the goal here in our, our, our go-to-market uh, um, strategy is funding within three days of completed application. It's fast. Antonio. Um, what does the process look like from beginning to end for someone who comes to VEDC? Well, we're certainly not three days or seven minutes by any means. Uh, our, our process is a little more traditional in a very, I guess, untraditional way. And what I mean by that is one of the lessons we've learned as lenders over the last couple of years is that uh, we need to go back to the old school way of lending, which is relationship lending. And we really need to know about the business, the business owner, and really dig deep into what that idea may be, if it's a startup, or if you're a business that's been around for 20 years and you're now struggling, why are you struggling, and how can we turn it around, and how can we help with that? So typically, assuming we have a full package, uh, we usually say within from two weeks to a month for approval, and that really depends on the loan product. VEDC, and I, and I failed to mention this in my introduction, but VEDC uh, has the capacity to deal with anything as small as a $2,000 loan request, to a $5 million request to purchase your own building and anything in between. So if it's a micro loan request under, let's say, $50,000, there's no reason why we can't underwrite that and get it approved for you within two weeks. Now, we're talking about a larger loan request, let's say over $50,000, you know, and there's a little more underwriting involved, a little more process involved, documentation. Maybe there's more ownership uh, structure, more complicated structure. We can take 30 to 45 days. And Marco, can you talk about um how you all, when you describe your underwriting process, it was um, quite similar in many ways to the, um, the way that um, the banks talked about underwriting this morning. Um, can you talk about either what differentiates or, or, or how your process gets to different answers than banks and why? Um, our biggest difference is that we give a bigger weight to the business cash flow compared to what a bank would want to see is two or three years of profitability. Even better if you can back that up with uh, audited financial statements. Even better if you can back it up with uh, some real estate collateral. We don't ask for any of that. First of all, what we do ask is that the business has been around for a year or more that is actually active and is showing revenue and is showing cash flow. Uh, and then what we do is we try to find ways to, uh, uh, to say yes. Um, we don't typically take any real estate, commercial, residential as collateral. Uh, we try to find either business vehicles or some uh, equipment or something within the business that is doable uh, to get us to a yes. And to get us to a yes, meaning that our collateral is not going to be a par with a bank that is two times coverage or one and a half times coverage is actually much less than that. Um, so basically the cash flow of the business is the, the biggest difference in what a bank right now could actually look at a business and say no and we can actually go and say yes. I go back to the fact and the reality that we do it based on the business but we do look at the owner's personal 
credit history. If that is in line with something reasonable, uh, then we will say yes. If the business owner is going through some major financial strain, we probably wouldn't say yes, even if the business is showing strong cash flow. Catherine, um, when folks come to Cabbage, um, are they typically uh, starting with you instead of a commercial bank or, um, or after not having gotten capital from a commercial bank? What, what drives the interest in Cabbage? Most of our customers haven't even been to a bank because they have no belief that they're going to get anything from a commercial bank. We have one customer who, um, this was from a couple years ago, he had a hardware store in the Midwest and was doing more business online than he was offline, walked into his bank, he had a line with him and said, hey, I really could grow this online business if I could just get access to another $50,000. And they looked at him and said, you know, we, we, we really think that's a great idea, but we think this internet thing is just a fad. So it's, it's unbelievable sort of the attitude that commercial banks have. I've got two customers right now who at, we provide between $500 and $50,000 via our automated process. They're doing millions of dollars a year and they need commercial bank loans and they can't get, get them because the banks are requiring that um, they have, if they want $100,000, they need to have $100,000 in the bank. And these guys can generate tons of revenue off of $100,000. They're like, why would I park $100,000 with you when I could use that to generate more revenue? So these are customers who feel disenfranchised or ostracized by sort of the traditional lending process. Um, I'm actually, got, I'm gonna introduce the guys, the two customers that I'm talking about because one of them is in LA. Um, and so I, they, they need people that can help them, but even with a lot of revenue, they can't go into a bank and get a loan. And it's, it's just unbelievable to me that it's that hard. I don't think I answered your question, but it's my soapbox. <laughs> Antonio, do you find that, um, that uh, business owners start with you all or come to you uh, after a bank, and would you, where would you recommend they start? Actually, uh, we, we're probably a little different than, than Cabbage in that most of our programs actually require you to already have gone to a bank and apply. So uh, we want to make sure that you've gone to other resources that oftentimes may be a little more affordable may be a better relationship for you in the long run. If you've tried that and you've been unsuccessful, then we'll, we'll take you in. Uh, sometimes we may even say, well, you know what, who do you bank with? Go try them first and then come back and see us. So we pride ourselves in being the alternative lender, you know, and like I said earlier, we, we don't try and compete with our partner banks in any way. We wanna make sure that there was a need that was not met and we can meet it. So um, to piggyback on what Marco was saying, we're a little bit different in that a bank nowadays, you're talking to somebody who worked for Wells Fargo for seven years. Uh, you know, we want to see one and a quarter times plus, you know, on your cash flow. We want to see one and a half times plus, you know, cover collateral. Uh, we want to see, you know, nowadays, 720 plus credit scores, you know. Uh, and despite all the documentation a bank or a lender may ask from you, really we're focusing on three big main things, cash flow, collateral, and credit. Well, as an alternative lender, you know, we, may, we are already expecting for all those things not to be perfect. You know, so what we try and do is, if the cash flow hasn't been there, well, how can we mitigate that risk with some collateral? Or, you know what, I inherited my parents' home, it's paid off free and clear, I'm a two-year business, just now breaking even, I don't have any outside income, can you help me? Well, we can mitigate certain risks by taking a deed on that home, you know, and help you fund your business that way, we may do it. So we look for ways on how to say yes. It just has to make sense. One of the, one of the things that I'm always preaching is, you know, we want to make loans. You need them. How can we meet in the middle? Maybe can you talk about um, the types of uh, lenders on the platform, on the mar in the marketplace of Lendio that one could be matched to in addition to a commercial bank? Yes, and I'll, I'll lump credit unions with commercial banks. Uh, so we have uh, a lot of alternative lenders uh, that offer similar programs to, to what you've heard about today on this panel. Um, some that will advance you money based on your Visa and MasterCard swipes versus uh, where uh, Patrick and American Express can help you, if you ha with your uh, American uh, Express swipes. Um, factoring, so if you need to uh, sell your AR so that you can generate some cash now. Equipment financing or equipment leasing usually uh, will have a little bit more lenient terms than, say, a traditional loan. Um, uh, we, ha we haven't done this yet, but we are looking at some crowdfunding partners uh, that where you can kind of uh, get a loan more through the social space. 
Um, there are peer-to-peer -peer lenders on our platform, actually just, just one now, but um, we do have a peer-to-peer -peer lender uh, in the event that it fails when you go to a bank, and which is sometimes a good avenue for a startup as well. So there is a, a variety, a pretty good mix of alternative lenders that, that can help out. Um, if there's a PO or just something, some way to shore up and mitigate risk. The, the person that's gonna have the most difficult time is if there's no, they don't have one thing to hold on to to say, I'm not risky. So they don't have good personal credit, they don't have good business credit, they don't have any collateral, they don't have any time of business, um, they don't have any AR, they don't have any, they're not processing credit cards, they don't have any cash flow, then there's just no way for any uh, lender, alternative or not, to say, here's how I can short my risk and protect myself, and so then, of course, you'll you'll be unsuccessful. And Tammy, can I echo what he just said? Uh, uh, Patrick mentioned something very important. He mentioned factoring, and you know sometimes what's encompassed in factoring or factoring type of, of products is accounts receivable financing, purchase order financing. You know those are very valuable tools that have become more common again in the last couple of years because if you're a small business or an individual who has struggled like most of us have. If we've, you know, our personal credit has deteriorated, our cash flow hasn't been there, maybe we're a young business two, three years into our, into the stage, and we don't have any reserves built up yet or no collateral, sometimes these products are the better resource to access capital. Maybe a little, may, may cost a little more, but what's important is that for these type of, for those type of products, you, the bar, you, the business, matter less than your customers or who you're selling to or your vendors. So it kind of takes away the onus on, on them underwriting you as much as they're underwriting your clients. So if that purchase order has some value, you may be able to access capital based solely on that purchase order and not so much on your personal credit. So just want to add that. We're going to try to open it up for questions, but before we do that, uh, Natasha, Freya, um, can you talk about your first loan came from Opportunity Fund. Um, as you think about growing Cool House, uh, where do you expect to turn for financing next? Well, I think we certainly learned a lot today. Um, we do have, you know, uh, uh, a private investor that um, has been involved with us for the last year or so. Um, so that that kind of means access to capital, if you will, um, has helped us definitely grow and also, you know, having a, a mentor and someone to kind of be on the team. But um, I think we're, again, getting to a place where we're going to, we're trying to reach out. Um, yeah, so, and, it, and it still is, it's still yeah. difficult out there. Like when we started and, you know, we met Marco in 2009, I think. 2010, I think. Or 2010. And, uh, you know, we just went to our bank recently and tried to get a credit card. Imagine that, just a credit card. Mm -hmm. And we're denied. <laughs> and yeah. and this, this has happened multiple times. So it's actually, it's still kind of difficult out there. We, we've been operating now for three years. We cash flow. We have nine assets, and yeah. we can't get a credit card from a traditional revenue. bank. So and we keep coming back year after year, the same. Come next year, come next and we year. have pretty decent credit. Yeah, like, I, low seven so, hundreds. So to this day, it's still our gas card is our only other form of you know credit card, <laughs> <laughs> so, which is useful for trucks. So. Yeah. <laughs> Do any of you all have guidance uh, for them before we open it up to questions? Well, they keep coming to us. Yeah, yeah. 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 just keep going where we know we can get it. We'll, we'll take so. care. Time for a new bank, it sounds like. Yeah. So, yeah. So. <laughs> the only other thing I would add, if I could, which I overlooked earlier in saying, which I think something that people miss when they're when applying for credit is, uh, particularly when you're in the alternate financing space, the relationship you have with your landlord is important. And you can consider them another reference in, in obtaining capital, particularly if it's alternative capital. Because what you know, American Express and other lenders are looking to, to evaluate is, if I'm going to lend you money, are you gonna be in that storefront, in that space throughout the term and duration of that loan? So most folks will do also what's called a, a landlord verification call. Are you current on your rent? You know, so it's another source of, uh, you should really you know, be mindful of in the relationship you have, is really that with your landlord. I would add one more thing. I, I think it's really impressive that you guys have an investor and that you've been willing to give up some of your company and I think that's something that a lot of small business owners don't think about is they say, oh, I don't want to give up a piece of my company. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to have the whole thing to myself. But my motto has always been it's better to have a small piece of something big than a big piece of nothing. So don't be afraid to give a little bit away in order to get a lot more in return. And there are ways to structure it, like a convertible note. Absolutely. Example, so. and, and just to add on to that, also just having another member of the team, someone else who... You know, they might not play a day-to-day -day role, but in our case, it's you know he's an incredible mentor and uh, has helped us you know build the vision. So it's, 
not even just about money, it's about the, the personnel and the strategy and the brain too. That's been interesting, so. I think we have uh, a little bit of time for questions. Are there questions in the audience? Testing. Yes, good morning. Thank you so much for the information going forward. Uh, just wanted to ask, how do, do any of you have relationships with, or how do you handle uh, nonprofits, uh, CBOs, and uh, faith-based organizations? I, I can start. Uh, uh, we don't really market to, to nonprofits too much, but uh, we have in the past done a few loans to nonprofits. Uh, to be very honest with you, it's, it's obviously very tough. I mean, it's tough lending to a for-profit company, right? It's, it's much tougher lending to a nonprofit. Um, the, the few that we've done in the past few years have had some level of tangible asset that they've pledged for collateral. Uh, one of the bigger challenges in lending to nonprofits is you, you rarely have a personal guarantee available. You know, so we've looked for alternative sources of security, uh, providing security for that. So it might be some type of tangible asset, even real estate. Uh, if it's a faith-based organization and they own real estate, which sometimes they do, they can pledge that for collateral with us, and we would be happy to look at it. Look at that. Nobody else? There was a question. Do you guys, um, how much weight do you give to the new the, the problem is we don't have a lot of coverage for the merchants that that we serve. So our hit rates, you know, less than 25% probably just because they are smaller businesses. Uh, the, the Duns number, your, your business credit will typically have a lot more influence on any type of, of traditional loan. So with a bank or a credit union or a, a more traditional lender and on bigger loans and on SBA loans and things like that. And then alternative lenders usually have found a different way to shore up their risk. And so Cabbage, for example, she explained how they shore up risk. American Express has explained it. And so uh, it's hard to say if I have a great Dunn's number or a great uh, credit score uh, with Dunn and Bradstreet, my paydex score, what will, how much will I get? Because there's still a lot of other factors. That's never the only thing that will be looked at. It just becomes an important piece of criteria, but that will always be more so with traditional loans and it will with alternative loans. Yeah, I'll totally echo that as well. Again, at the end of the day, the, the, the underwriting models that, that are being used to assess uh, these businesses are, are very, very complex. There are many, many factors in that, and it is one of many pieces. It's just a piece you can't ignore. I think with that, we're out of time. I want to thank our panelists who um, uh, are doing amazing work getting um, alternative loans out to business owners. And to Cool House, congratulations. Um, the, business the lenders will all be in the town hall um, room next door, and you should visit them uh, to learn more about how to access capital from uh, each of these organizations. Thank you.